Hi, Zach and Mohammed. It's great to be here with you guys. How's it going today? It's going well. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. I am curious to hear from you. I mean, when did it become clear that the vision and concept of Crack Cloud needed a collective to bring that idea to life? And yeah, and, and, and what that realization was like. Yeah, Ali and I come from somewhat a fringe community of sorts. Uh, and I think that from the beginning, it's always been a very DIY process um, just by default of us not having really any sort of background when it comes to video or music. And it's, 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 it's really just been a, uh, uh, a journey that we committed ourselves to um, over years of, of unraveling um, and discovering ourselves and our identity and, and the people around us um, have always played a significant role in uh, that process. The collective uh, was more of a survival mechanism, meaning I've been in multiple music projects or creative projects that kind of fall on the wayside because maybe one person couldn't keep up or the plans have changed things uh you know they have to, they had a kid or got a new job and and because of that you're 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 faced with this turmoil of do we continue this project do we end it do we start something new and so the reality is track cloud we was always, uh, I find, a manifestation of the body of work that Zach and myself had been accumulating and working towards for the last 10 years. Uh, and so when Zach was making a lot of these demos and um, getting uh, different people from all over the, uh, the city, at least in Calgary, to record a track, record a layer, and all that stuff, it just became more and more obvious that we couldn't, like we were, you know, you can't really, we had to call it a collective because there's so, it's just, there's so many different artists and it, it, it's a, it's something about, we wanted to teach ourselves about attachment and stuff too. And like life and, um, and, uh, whether something can have its own life, even outside of the same pe the people who even made it. Right. You know, so like the, the concepts want to go larger and that's why we kind of, uh, keep that openness to it. Because we, you know, we jokingly daydream that in 10, 15 years, this project's still going with none of the original members. Um, stuff like that. Uh, so, um, but, you know, it was never sought out, we need to make a collective. It was, um, who can come on tour? Who can play this part? Um, who can make the sacrifices here and there? And a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, I guess just... It's just about communication and, and seeing where you guys, uh, everybody lines up. And, and if it works, it works and it moves forward. Definitely. And I think, you know, when you're, when you're working with a number of people, there's a lot of um, like emotional care that goes into that, but also uh, nurturing and nourishing of somebody's creative ambitions. I mean, in the context of working on a music video where there are just a number of different um, audio visual elements that need to come together a lot of planning ahead of time before during and after I wonder if you can take me through how you've managed executing the life cycle of a project beginning to end okay well yeah that's great because you know when we first made our first music video um, with this project we had decided very quickly off the bat with my myself and Zach that we weren't we were going to spend enough time until it was ready to present the way we wanted it to present it um sorry okay there now i can hear you guys um so as far as that one went it was just me and him working really um intensely together um and you know literally reshooting shots uh you know five six different times and days apart from each other and um just to make sure we got the right shot. And that type of, um, um, I guess, um, uh, like uh, willingness to, to kind of make those type of sacrifices uh, was more of setting the tone of how we wanted to keep moving these projects forward and how we wanted to incorporate more people. 
I think we had to build a, um, a trust with uh, the other creatives uh, so that they could understand what we would be making and kind of fall, fall um, into that world uh, and, and, what we're, and what we're trying to execute. Uh, but at first it was, you know, really like we, it was just me and Zach. And then, um, you know, it, uh, like a large part of the video ideas do just come from me and Zach and then expanded on from other people. Um, uh, but the majority of it is just like, you know, we have a rough outline. Um, some days we know the shoot days are going to be like, Hey, we're leaving this whole section to improv. Like we know kind of the idea of what we're trying to go, but we're going to figure it out once we get there with the camera. Um, and then, then there's other parts that are like storyboarded to a T that we can't, it, things have to match in time musically perfectly. So I think though, um, we are still learning how to better, um, spread out, uh, I guess the duties and the efficiency to be more pragmatic and cost efficient. But, you know, me and Zach came from a pretty DIY upbringing, so it was always by any means uh, necessary, you know, like what, whatever was around, we, were, we would just grab it. Like even, even when it came to recording, it was, oh, this space was lo is in our house. Whose is it? We don't even know, but we're going to use it to track this. <laughs> uh, you know, really. And, and so it was less about, oh, I need the newest pedal and I need this. And, like, you know, we didn't come from that privileged upbringing. We didn't have any of that stuff, right? Like I, my parents didn't even let me, they don't even, haven't seen a live show of mine before yet, you know? So... Like the, the music is just not a thing. And um, so we, that's kind of the fundamental attitude that when it came to creating all this stuff was like, you know, we're going to go balls to the wall and we're going to prove why we, why we want to be here. Why all these years and all of our experiences have accumulated to something. Uh, we gravitated toward people who are maybe disgruntled, at least where they were in life. And similarly as disgruntled youth, um, we found a lot of solace uh, meeting people who shared similar struggles. And I think that was kind of the, the glue in the beginning was uh, finding a safe space where we could all talk about these things, contextualize each other's experiences, relate to one another, uh, and in doing so, learn about each other and I mean, Mohammed and I have always been working on videos, music, but not always in the healthiest capacity. And I think that for many years growing up, our art was hindered by a lot of our toxic habits. So there was a turning point, and I would have to associate that with our rehabilitation. Um, we've always kind of lived in tandem with one another as far as our trajectory in life. And so maybe six years ago, we really committed to this ideal of cleaning up, uh, reconciling loose ends, and finding a healthy outlet for a lot of the emotion that I think for a long time held us back. Um, but there is a lot of potential in emotion and so it was just a matter of harnessing it and transcribing it in a way that was healthy and positive and I think that was really attractive for the people in our circle and it was a way of drawing emotion out of other people in a healthy capacity and and so it's it was never too contrived other than like the most fundamental basis of hey we're trying to clean up we need a healthy outlet to to do this stuff let's let's make music in the living room let's go out with a camcorder uh whatever whatever gave us uh a release um and i think expression uh contextualizing it in the in the in an artistic way can be just as exhilarating as using drugs or whatever vice um that that was kind of the uh the initial fix for everyone and, and then it's just kind of snowballed from there and i think that we've i mean a lot life life carries on and you grow and 
we started this in our early 20s and you know i'm turning 30 this year so a lot has happened since craft cloud began six years ago and so the people in our life have somewhat shifted i mean there are a lot of people that have been with us since the beginning family um childhood friends but also i mean the beauty of craft cloud is that it's a rotating door and when we move cities or relocate or new, new season always brings new people in the community and so there's always just a, a an opportunity to recalibrate and refresh and bring in new voices and just kind of refine what we're doing and and, and really at the end of the day it's just whoever out there has the ambition and like the audacity to want to work on uh, video and, and music in a kind of uninhibited way and uh, kind of go against the grain and just experiment and, and what have you. That That's kind of just uh, the foundation that we've built and the infrastructure that we're trying to continue to reinforce in Vancouver now. I wonder if you can recall working on a project where you really felt in that moment that just the dynamic of the group that you'd kind of built and supported made a particular idea that came to life in your head um, uniquely possible that sort of wouldn't have been been yeah <laughs> kind of well, yeah well because luckily enough, like what I, any I, other way well yeah like honestly like our friends and our peers and our our, our, our all the artists around us and all, are very talented that if if I know if any single one of them had an opportunity to be on any international stage to show off any of their art, they'd be well respected. So I think for, for myself, uh, it was not only do I, f I, I just find them all very beautiful people uh, because from the inside out. And um, I knew if I could capture that type of feeling that I have for these people and, 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 and showcase these ensembles uh, with the, uh, with a sense of pride. Uh, there's so many shots that I don't think would have ever been as beautiful or as unique as they are if the individual themselves were not there and ha had helped. You know, we don't even have to go, hey, this is what your uh, your outfit's gonna be because we literally asked them to be in the, the thing knowing full well that whatever they decided to wear is gonna be perfect for what we're doing because we're giving a lot of the creative liberties and freedoms to that person. So it's just, it's just uh, giving a lot of individual um, efforts, but, and, and allowing them to be a part of something that's, you know, a, a pretty large ensemble. And, and because it's, I, I would like to say that you're, you're around really good company because a lot of us really, uh, uh, you know, pride ourselves in, in working really hard on, uh, you know, our ideas and art and everything. But um, yeah, I think like there's there's quite a few shots that I, I I've just been like amazed by the outcome. But I'm like this is just the perfect storm. Uh, and um, and but then I always have to I don't leave that to chance. You know, it's because of the environments that we've created over the years, and also just like the settings. Like I have to remind you that in Alberta, like not when we where we came from at least. Like you know, there's not much to do uh, other than you know community living. You know, we we all kind of. You know, every, there was no uh, studio rehearsal spaces. Everyone just did that at their own homes. And uh, because of that, it, it was, um, you know, uh, uh, just there's, there's a, it's mostly a transformative time, but there's just people coming in and out, in and out. And I think Crack Cloud kind of represents that too as, an, uh, as a musical idea and a force. It's just, um, um, so we just try to like, you know, try, I think it was more or less, how do we show and present uh, the uniqueness of the situations we're in and uh, and how does that separate from the way we digest other art. And I think it was just refreshing for people and I think that's, it'll hopefully continue to be refreshing if we keep, keep it up. I think the process in the beginning, to be honest, was a mix of resentment, um, I think we were we were really driven by resentment uh, and just a, a, a lot of anxiety and pent up frustration. Um, just as people who 
felt really alienated when we were young. And I think that like we used art in the beginning as a way to really amp ourselves up and, and you know, like I say, just kind of a cathartic kind of release um, without really thinking about blending in or, or whatever. And I, I think that it wasn't until retrospect where we, you know, watched the first video, the next video, it, it, it's, every time you put something out, you realize that like, although maybe this came from like a dark place, you look back and you think, wow, like that process was really uh, healing. Um, and I got to know you so much better and I got to know myself so much better. And when we realized the potency of the creative process, I think um, we were able to refine it in a way where it has become a lot more orchestrated, um, a lot more grounded. I think in life, everybody has um, something that propels them forward, um, whether it's, I mean, ultimately it's ego, but whether it's uh, your motivation comes from uh, some sort of competitive aspect or whether it comes from wanting to be accepted or whether it comes from just pure uh, living in the moment and, and uh, finding benevolence in your craft. I think maybe a little bit of everything. And uh, we've tried to steer more away from this um, place where we're fueled by uh, anger and frustration. And we've, kind of pivoted into this space now where we feel really comfortable and competent with what we're doing despite not having any kind of academic or professional background. And it's really exciting when you get to that place in your career where you kind of know what you need to do to see something through. And it allows us to really focus on all kinds of stories, not just stories based on our own trauma, but stories that excite us within the realm of fantasy uh, or just pure fiction, um, focusing on highlights in life and not just the lowest of the lows. And so because the process has broadened a lot and it's far less cynical now, uh, I would say that it's really streamlined and inclusive in that we, we've, we've built relationships with people who have backgrounds with choreography and dance, with 3D, with costume design, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just a matter of coming up with a story that is compelling enough and resonates enough with each of us, despite our differences that we all feel motivated to execute and then it's just uh, laying down the groundwork and bringing it to life slowly but surely. Um, funding has helped. It's been a new aspect of our creative process for many years. It was all out of pocket, scrounging, doing what we needed to do. Sometimes uh, illegally to pull a shot off. Now we're in a place where we're able to I uh, kind of work within the parameters of the film industry and and uh, follow a more conventional route when it comes to our productions. Um, and I think we have nostalgia for both and we're constantly revisiting, you know, the old process of whatever it takes to get the shot. I think that we've always really romanticized the guerrilla filmmaking of the 60s and 70s and 90s and that'll always be uh, an element in our creative process but it's also really fun to work with larger teams and uh yeah it's uh it's always changing and that evolution is what keeps crack cloud propelling forward and i think the moment we become stagnant in our process is the moment we need to reconsider what we're doing in life Mm -hmm. I think uh, hearing you describe the 
uh, creative process in its entirety made me think of this quote, and I wish I remember who it was from, and I think I might be paraphrasing it, but basically just talks about, like, when you arrive at the end of a project, you should arrive whole, you shouldn't arrive in pieces. And I think we have a tendency to think you can kind of, like, break your back, and as long as you get to the finish line, at least you crossed it. Versus, like, if you are in a million different bits, like, can you still call that a win? And Yeah, I know. And I guess that's debatable. And um, mm-hmm. because some people, it's just how you see life and how you perceive it and how you, like, for me, I know some people would rather work really hard, not enjoy their time and leave this artifact for everybody when they're dead that everybody will enjoy for hundreds of years that's how they will get their enjoy- satisfaction in life, right? But some people also want to get satisfaction um, in different ways. And I think we, we've we been to- toiling with that, you know, going up and down and on our willingness to make certain sacrifices uh, versus, you know, uh, trying to enjoy our days. And sometimes you can't just create and manifest f- time that doesn't exist. And so... Um, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, like when it comes to that stuff uh, and, and how you want to be spending your time. I think that's a really interesting question that we're constantly juggling with. And I think that maybe I've even revealed a little bit of dissonance when it comes to um, the trade off between authenticity and taking care of yourself in doing so. Uh, and I would say that revisiting past traumas. Uh, favor your fortune I would say for Mohammed the next fix for me can bring up a lot of baggage but I'd like to believe that we're better for it in the end Um, again I never want to lose sight of crack cloud as a kind of therapeutic outlet a way of learning about ourselves um, in a really magnificent kind of enacted way Um, yeah I uh, it's really interesting. And I think that we kind of go into autopilot with some of these productions, um, not thinking too much as far as foresight goes. It's more just living in the moment and really stewing and living in our reality and, and trying to, to tell these stories in a way that just feels as um, tangible as the way that we experience them ourselves. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's definitely somewhat a paradox to, to have to go into the past and, and unravel a lot of this uh, negative emotion that has informed us. But at the same time, it's like I say, it's a matter of seizing that and embracing it in a way where you turn it into something positive. And when I say positive, I mean bringing people together to work on something uh, and when you watch it, there's a lot of closure, I would say, um, at least for me, when I, whenever we make something, I, I, uh, I learn a lot after the fact. And, and when I watch it, there's a, a lot of insight that I have that I didn't have before it came out. Um, it's kind of a, a spiritual thing, uh, in a way to just let your emotions carry you through the process and um, I don't think that we would be where we are now if we didn't uh, tackle some of the subject matter that we felt uh, obliged to to tackle Um, and I think that's life is you have to push yourself through uncomfortable situations and the only way to really grow and evolve is to confront a lot of things that have maybe stifled you in the past and I'm so grateful to have uh, to have had the opportunity to work with a platform like Clack Crowd, Clack Crowd, Crack Cloud, to uh, to just unravel a lot of this stuff. And I think, um, yeah, just a lot has changed, and it's um, it's a it's a positive process, um, but it comes with a lot of introspection and some pensive nights. Uh, Ali goes through a lot when it comes to the editing process. Um, I go through a lot when it comes to the writing and producing process. And and I think we all kind of experience each other 
vicariously during these times and it can be very solemn but i yeah it's uh, it's just a journey every time and it's always really exciting definitely i mean uh you guys um are being awarded the high fidelity award for your work and i think throughout this conversation it's been made so clear that there are just you know, there are fruits and there are guts in this work. It's just um, a lot of a lot of time and intention and, and spirit and soul that's gone into it that has birthed a lot of really beautiful and spectacular innovative art. And for you, I mean, what does that innovation look like now? What are you like? What do you have your eye on for the future? And what does it mean to have your art recognized at this level? I think it's something that we've never really anticipated. I think that the recognition means a lot for me to be able to bring that to the table with my family who for a long time have been quite disassociated with the direction that I chose to take in life. Um, and uh, really, yeah, it's... Um, the kind of symbolism that, again, my, my family can really appreciate. I think it helps them understand why we're putting time into what we're doing. Um, and sometimes you, that kind of symbolism just goes a long way. Um, it's never been a focus, like I say, but uh, deeply grateful to, uh, to be a part of this process. Um, and yeah, it just kind of reinforces our commitment to the work that we're doing. For me personally, I find it um, really, um, what's the word? It's um, I, 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 like, I'm pretty excited about it just because A, I've never really wanted anything before. <laughs> uh, B, I just really, I, I really pride myself in uh, a lot of the sacrifices and the uh, skill, skill sets I've had to learn over the years as far as classical animation, 3D animation, all this art. I'm all self-taught, etc. So it's a perfect storm. You know, me and Zach definitely feel like we, we deserve this because of our persistence and our headstrongness to really want to make sure that we, we, we put this like we we that we riled everyone together to make sure like hey the dream isn't over you know like we're getting older but like the the like this still in our blood we do this this is what we do for our life like every single one of you do, does this this is like what you're about so we really want to make sure we highlighted that but so getting this this it kind of totally validates uh a lot of the things uh that I've been working on in a lot of the moments where I've been sitting all weekend on a computer instead of going out and doing anything, uh, even pre COVID, uh, you know, like where it was just like, you know, those are the days when I was sitting and kind of getting depressed when I said, Oh, I'll be there at 10. Yeah, I'll be there. And then 10 came by. Like, oh no, I'll be there at 11, you know, in the evening. And then midnight rolls around. I'm like, ah, oh, sorry guys. I don't know if I'm going to make it anymore, you know, and that how it was happening hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, uh, and so, Getting something like this just makes it go like that's why because I was you know I was thinking about how is this stuff going to resonate if I don't put in the time and the effort that I'm putting in now I don't know if it will resonate you know you could give somebody all that footage that we that we shoot but it's you know there's a uniqueness to how we present it and um, uh, so th there's a lot of toiling and making sure that it's the way we want it and I think this is super validating yeah. For sure. Just uh, wanted to to thank you, thank you, thank you for this conversation. This was exceptionally beautiful and felt really generative and uh, really knowledge bearing. So thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your sharing your truth. Likewise, I, I really appreciate the conversation, and I always learn a lot about myself during these things. Sometimes not so much. It really depends on the questions, and I, I thought that everything that you've been saying has been really thoughtful and I'm appreciative. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, it's nice meeting you all. I'm sure hopefully we get to chat again. I wish we could have done it in the flesh, uh, but you know, Always. I just, you know I'm, yeah, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> but I, I, I do, 
uh, like me, me and Zach will be really proud of this, and I'm sure the rest of the gang will be, uh, be proud of this as well. So um, we 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 want to just continue doing what we're doing and make sure it resonates with the people who who love it.